Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In today's episode, we are going back to Brandon, Manitoba, where we just got back from the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Now, amidst the vibrant energy of the conference, we seized the opportunity to engage with local elected leaders hailing from across the province. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. Today, we delve into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in Manitoba. So we will be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Thompson Councillor Kathy Valentino. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. So, uh, Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one, if you don't mind. Sure. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? My mom. How so? Uh, she was a huge, active volunteer in, in Thompson, involved in everything and on every board. And I just kind of grew up seeing that. So also had the mentality that we were always told we have to give back. And what, what made giving back in the municipal realm the best, best way to give back for Kathy? You could have chosen volunteerism, you could have chosen a nonprofit, but at the end of the day, you chose municipal. Why was that? I chose municipal because I've done the others. I was the volunteer and I was on nonprofit. And um, so my next natural step was to give back to my city. So that's why I went municipal. It wasn't easy. It was an easy decision. Was it? Yep. Was absolutely. there an issue going on at the time or was it someone asking you to put your name forward? No, I knew someday I always wanted to do it. Oh, really? And absolutely. Oh, this is this that you've just absolutely. opened a line of questions, Kathy. Absolutely. Here. So yeah. why? Why municipal? Because you could be as you could have chosen federal, you could have chosen provincial because they're both other levels of government that give back to your community, but municipal was where Kathy was best served, right? I think that you feel that you can actually make a difference within your own community when you run municipal. If you go to a different level of government, you're a little bit more handcuffed for your region. So municipal, you're the first line to your own community. So why wouldn't you want to run for it? To, to, to quote uh, FCM uh, President Scott Pierce, who I, I know every time I say it, I feel like I have to give him a dollar because I quote him so much on this show. You were the closest to the people mm -hmm. because you don't go off to Winnipeg to do your job. You don't go off to Man uh, Ottawa to do your job. But there's a double-edged sword that I always want to ask, and I'm going to kind of throw you under the bus to ask this the first time here mm -hmm. a little bit, but you there mm -hmm. for have people ask you questions because they will know who Kathy is. They might not know who their MLA is. They may not know who their MP is. So you'll have a range of questions asked to you, whether it be at the grocery store or via social media or via text or email. How do you balance the jurisdictional role of the municipality of what you can do with the questions that you get, whether it be healthcare, whether it be education, whether it be foreign is or federal issues that really have no bearing on municipalities, but because they are, you are closest to the people, they'll ask you about your opinions or how to fix these issues. Absolutely. So I think that first off, you have to listen to the people yeah. because if they say have a concern about healthcare, if I'm a municipal leader, I might not know that issue, right? So people, when they ask you questions or text you or email, you might not know that there's an issue. So you have to take the time to figure it out and, and reply and talk to them. And then you have to build relationships. So people should know that I'm not going to have an answer for you. 
and I'm not going to fix it, but I'm going to find out maybe where I can point you in the right direction or get somebody to get back to you. You can't portray yourself like you have the answer to everything and you're going to, because, because I, I can't. But if you have relationships and you talk and listen and you try and get them to the right direction, to the right people or the right department, that's all you can do. Do you find the people of Thompson uh, engaging on the issues of municipal uh, affairs, whether it be wastewater, whether it be street pavement, or is there an apathy that I find not only in Manitoba, but across Canada? And I want to paint a broad stroke here, and I always do, but I, I would say that there's an apathy of as long as my water's turned on in the morning when I will go have a shower and my uh, garbage is picked up, or if it's the middle of winter, as long as my road is paved in an appropriate manner. I'm comfortable what's going on at City Hall. Do you find people in Thompson actually engaging on the issues? If we're going to talk like City of Thompson specific? Yes, okay. the only City of Thompson okay. specific. So are they, are the, will you actually get people engage, engaging with you or do you have to sort of pry it out of them a little bit? I think there's a few points to answer to that okay. question. So I think engagement at a council level, say at a council meeting, no. Yeah. You get one or two people, the same one or two people. I'm surprised you get one or two. Right? Like, really? (laughs) Yeah. So that engagement in the formal council setting isn't. I mean, you stream stuff. So there's people are more aware, I think, now in this day and age because of social media and watching on YouTube and all of that. Um, I think we have a lot going on within our city right now. Yeah. Um, Lots of capital projects, lots of grant money. So there is a level of engagement, maybe more so than, say, five years ago when we were trying to get grants and, right, people were just complaining because... But now that you actually see stuff being done, people become engaged because yeah. it, they see it. And people need to see things to make them believe that you're doing something. They don't see the six years ago of, oh, God, how are we ever going to afford to do this? So, so, so then on the flip side of yeah. that answer is... How do you ensure people see things when municipalities are struggling to look at the future? Because municipalities are trying to set them up for the future of 10, 15 years from now, or even 20 years from now. But the people here and now want to see that their tax dollars are being spent here and now because that's where they are. And I'm kind of being glib about the question, but I think it's an important question. How do you balance the future of your community with the, the needs of the here and now residents? (laughs) <laughs> Ooh, you know, if somebody because has you... an answer to that, <laughs> I'd love for them to give me a call. <laughs> Two zero four six. <laughs> love that answer. So I'm going to flip the script a little bit. I want to go into segment two, and I okay. want to talk about the city of Thompson as a whole. And before I ask this question, as I always do, just to make sure people are aware, this is a conversation between the councillor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not even a policy of council. This is the councillor's opinion and her opinion alone. (laughs) Councillor, in your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing the city today as of this conversation? Our biggest challenges right now is probably the same as everybody in Canada public safety infrastructure funding and the next generation of how we're going to pay for infrastructure repair uh, and our health care those are our three top ones and I'm sure that that resonates with everybody else I would say about 99 percent of the people I've spoken to over the last three days would agree with that statement so I'm going to ask the simple question how is Thompson setting itself up to address those issues as a council yeah, we advocate quite a bit. We're a bit of a different beast in Thompson with where we're situated and how we service such a big region. So, because you're the hub of the north a little bit, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So our census, for instance, is I think 13,261. We service 60,000 north that, that come in to Thompson for groceries, for health care, for everything. Um, and then when the winter road season is open, that only increases because of the flow of traffic. So we have, for instance, public safety. We have the largest contract in the province at 37, and it's not enough. Yeah. So we struggle with um, public safety, the costs. We struggle with um, having so many people influx our community and then choosing not to go home. And they stay in our community, um, in our st- on our streets, and... So we work very hard and 
build relationships and our mayor is fantastic at that with the leadership within our region and we are continuing to escalate that provincially and federally that our residents of 13,000 cannot afford to pay for a public safety budget that is not the residents of Thompson that is really a good chunk of it is the region of 60,000 people. That's a real hot topic that we continually talk about and struggle with and we're trying to try to escalate that federally a little bit. We need some help with that. Our health care in our region, we are the hub of the north. Um, it's very difficult when you part of your health care is also funded with FNIB, which is the federal First Nation part. So there needs to be, and I know those conversations are starting, but they need to be one. If our health care is going to thrive and it's going to get fixed in the north it has to be one we have to we have to be one entity with the first nations and with our health authority Uh, and i know that that's being worked on and i want it to be worked on quicker but um the only you know our it's such a struggle to thompson's the only place to get the patients to winnipeg like the cost is horrendous for our health authority so (coughs) healthcare is a big one um we have agency nurses. They're keeping our healthcare system going. We have a great hospital. We're going to get an MRI. So all oh. that is, yeah, very, very positive. But, um, but that's a, a big concern for our region. And then our infrastructure. Uh, we have lots of ICIP dollars. We have lots of projects. Um, it's hard to get our match. Like It's great to have all this grant but it's hard to now match the dollars and to get the people because our workforce it's very hard to hire people we if are you anybody wants work a, for as well if anybody wants a job and an opportunity come to northern manitoba it's really oh yeah yeah our mine there just did a massive one day we'll hire you on the spot and give you six months to see if you can stay yeah yeah oh wow we're open for um labor in Thompson, absolutely. You heard it here first, people. Go to Thompson, Manitoba if you want to. You can buy a house, a great house on the tree line. You can work for the city, the contractors, the mine. Mm. Lots of opportunities. So I I want to flip that first question about challenges and talk about what does Thompson get right? What is the thing that you look at and you say, you know what, we're doing this good right now? Because I know that Nothing is ever perfect because as in a municipality, you're always evolving, you're always growing, you're always trying to make things better. But right here, right now, what is the thing that you look at and you say, you know what, Thompson's getting this right? <laughs> I love this question. <laughs> I love talking about good things. It, it, okay. Cara Westerlin, God bless her, the vice president of the vice president of the rural municipalities of Alberta, accused me of only talking about negative things. So that question is because of her. So hi, Cara, if you're watching this. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I think we don't talk about good things enough. Yeah. We don't. I and, agree. And people have a hard time if you say, hey, tell me good things going on in your community. They kind of, mm, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Okay, so I'll tell you what we do good. We do great with um, relationship building, with, especially with our First Nation partners. We're great at it. And we have, um, we were the first in the province to have the community safety well-being plan. And we use it in everything we do we look at it for a lens of if we're going to build a pool in our community safety well-being plan it's identified in pillar number three that our community wants this who's going to be the lead on it what what partners are going to be involved we're good at this we were the first to have a, a cso program in the province and they used us as a guinea pig and it was such a success that they cut our funding because then everybody wanted it of course, of course. Why wouldn't they cut your funding yeah. the moment you get Yeah, so we're, we're good at pilot projects. We're good at trying whatever. We'll tell you if it's not working, but we also tell you when it is working. So we have a lot of um, municipalities that reach out to us at Thompson. They've, we had the city of Portage come and visit us. Like, how are you, building, how are you using a well variety center? How is that working? How did you do this? Um, so we're good at being creative to find our own solutions to our problems. I, I I really believe that we are. Um, now, final final area I want to talk about here, okay. and it's my favorite because this August, I am taking an RV and I am crisscrossing every single municipality that has ever come on my show in Manitoba for a few weeks in an RV with seven dogs. So I'm coming up to Thompson. 
Well, my mayor owns the campground, so you can take the RV and stay there. There you go. So what should a tourist do? What is the highlights of Thompson that you would recommend to anyone coming to the area that you say, if you come, you have to see this? Okay. <laughs> Got 20 minutes? Go for it. <laughs> I was born there. Like, I'm thinking, this is great. I love people coming to visit. So first, you're going to stop at Pisu Falls. Okay. Uh, it's a provincial, like, little park area. It's beautiful, the falls there. Um, there's Paint Lake. I think it's the second largest marina, boat marina in the province. It's, a, it's another provincial park on your way, 20 minutes out. I have a remote cabin there. You let me know when you're coming. Seven dogs is excessive in my boat, but we could... It's Yorkies, so they're like this big. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we have, like, we all have boats and okay. cabins and all that stuff. So you got to do that. Um, if you come in August, I would, you know, coming in June is better because you almost get the whole daylight, right? All so you can fish and be on the lake almost all night. But it's okay. We can make something work for you in August. <laughs> full moon. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got to do the touristing things. We have, um, we are the wolf capital of the world. Oh. Thompson. So we have massive, there's one uh, downtown Winnipeg, the big wolf the big concrete wolves. Yeah. We have a spirit way with a map where you can, you look for the, these wolves throughout the community. We have a Robert Bateman, I think it's the largest painting of a wolf on the side of one of our high rise apartments. Everybody gets their picture with. Um, I would highly recommend that you see our new, I think it's like a $80 million airport that's being built. It's very impressive. We have a nine-hole golf course. Ooh, bring in my golf club because I've already been told by three other municipalities that they have the best golf course. So I'm going to be golfing a lot in this in August, I think. So I'm going to have to uh, uh, prove who has the best golf course. We don't have the best, but we got a good one. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm not going to lie. It's a nine-hole one. It's good. It's not going to be the best, but bring in golf clubs. Is there a place that you go? Is there a place that you go after a council meeting, after a long day of work, that you can go and decompress at and just let it all go, knowing that tomorrow morning you're going to have to get back up and do the exact same thing over again? Well, I spend a lot of time at my remote cabin. Okay. Just came across the ice on my skidoo on Saturday, actually. So, And I just got Starlink. God love Elon Musk, because now I can do Zoom meetings out there. <laughs> That's the best way that I could say it. So my final question for you, and it's the million dollar one, because I think it's a question that every municipal leader knows how to answer, but let's put it on the record for a little bit. All right. What makes the city of Thompson such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? The people. Wow, nice and simple. It's the people. It's the, it's the greatest place. Like We are good people, and uh, it's the relationships. It's Everybody always says that. Like The people in Thompson are amazing well, Kathy I want to thank you so much for doing this I, I like how it's nice simple quick to the point um, it's always a pleasure to sit down with municipal leaders I feel like you and I are going to be chatting again a little bit later so it's stay tuned so. to municipal affairs so. Um, so thank you so much for doing this you're awesome thank you for coming here we want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon Manitoba this episode would not have been achievable without their support if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged but your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.